Let's get into this because there is a team that is taking the NFL by storm. That team is the Cleveland Browns. You know, that Cleveland Brown team. Oh, yeah. That's got 11 wins in four years. So the Cleveland Browns are talking big things this year in Cleveland. Freddie Kitchens, their head coach, is talking not only big things, but the biggest thing while he is still a head coach for the Cleveland Browns. Our goal here with the Cleveland Browns, as long as I'm here, will always be to win the Super Bowl. All right? Now, that's the last time I'm going to say that. Just know and make it a given that that's what I believe to my core is to win the Super Bowl. Now, you don't do that by talking about it, and you don't do that by outside expectations. You do that by uh, putting the expectations on how you prepare on a day-in and day-out basis. We don't have 53 guys here at the end of this thing that that's their goal. Then they're in the wrong business. All right. Freddie Kitchens. Not Talking a surprise. about the obvious. Yeah, not not a surprise here. I think if you found a coach in the NFL whose goal wasn't to win the Super Bowl, that would be the real story. All right, I want to find that Thank coach. you. That, yeah. that, that's the, that uh, stop the presses. That's the big story. Yeah. If a coach says, we have no intention of winning the Super Bowl. Can, okay, it, thank you. It, can we slow it down on the Browns hype train? Can we is just this, slow it down, Is this the most please? unbelievable thing? Please. I've ever heard. You just said what they have four wins they've, in four they've years. Got, they've got eleven wins in 11 four wins. years, and we're talking super slow. Here's, here's down, the other one. Man. Can we go back to last year? They won seven games. How many games did they win against teams over five hundred? One. Yeah. They beat the Ravens twelve to nine when Joe Flacco was in the funk, and, and that was and, all, that, and he got benched after yeah, that game. And that was also a Ravens team who was getting ready to not only say goodbye to Joe Flacco in the off season, they were already and it went public. We're getting ready to say goodbye to John Harbaugh because it was rebuild time at Baltimore. So I just I've never I've never seen this much hype for a bad team in 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 the NFL in a long time. I I, I don't. I really don't understand it other than you're just – they're so happy to be better. And, I look, I, I love the Browns. One of my dear friends is a Cleveland Browns fan. And so I've been to Browns bars. I've been to, I've been to watch parties, all that stuff. And so I know the fan base and the culture pretty well. And they are a loyal fan base, and they love their team, and they've gone through some crap, man. And I they've get gone, it. Yeah, they've I, gone I, through some crap. They <laughs> lost a franchise, and then the team they lost ended up winning a Super Bowl, and then they got the team back, and they've, you know, it's been this journey, and they've had, you know, bad management, and and I all get, these I other get things. It. I get all that. So I, I, I love the Browns fan base, but man, oh man, would somebody just take a step back and go, all right, look, yeah, hey, we we'd love to win the Super Bowl, but you know what? Be Awesome too, and I, and uh, I got eight it. And eight, eight and eight, maybe they you got know? a they got a splash of names. So when they got Odell, oh my God! And then you look at Odell's record and you say, wait a minute, he only he was uh, went to the playoffs one time, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and his whole career in yeah. New York. So it wasn't like he won something or had done anything. Right. And then my thing is they for for all the uh, hubbub about them last year. They just weren't that impressive against the good teams. And until you get to that point, if I'm the coach, if I'm Kitchens, I would have been talking about making the playoffs this year. That would have been my conversation yeah. was. Yeah, that's fine. We're, we're here. We Once you can make the playoffs, then you have a chance like everybody else to win a Super Bowl. But we're here to make the playoffs. This is something we haven't done to even bring up this Super Bowl notion. It's just silly. And who's the? Who do you think is responsible for the hype? Who do, you, who do you think is really pushing this this narrative? Is it media-driven? Because it I, feels like it is. I think it's media-driven yeah. because it's, they want a new story. And uh, Baker Mayfield, oh, it's about Baker. Oh, they got OBJ. Oh, you know, like look, all this other stuff. They got a little names. They look at the offense and think they're going to be high-powered. They're going to do all this stuff. I saw the games against the Bengals. Their Bengals defensive coordinator got run out of town because yeah. they gave up 500 yards four straight weeks. And that's when Cleveland, I think, I want to say Cleveland played them twice. And he, and here's the other thing. It feels like the media has gone too far in the other direction on this. Because back before uh, Baker Mayfield and all this stuff, what was the criticism of the Browns? Well, yeah, they passed up on Carson Wentz and all these other quality quarterbacks they could have had. Uh, 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 clearly, what a, what a shock. Every time Carson Wentz did something good, huh, look at who the Browns passed up on because they didn't believe he was a real quarterback. Here's a fact for media members from back then. 
If Carson Wentz were on that Browns roster, he wouldn't be the they've got two wins maybe. Right. Two wins maybe. That roster was a disaster. So don't give me the crap that we can just – it's an easy flop. You know, you just put Carson Wentz there and they all of a sudden win these games. He would play Stop. better, but he would not yeah. – when you don't have the personnel, I don't care who you are, you could you could put Tom Brady down in Jacksonville in the old days when, the old, when they right. first – and I'm telling you, Tom Brady's not going to the Super no. Bowl. And, and so it, it's it's the environment, it's what's around you. So there was all of that narrative around the Browns that was way too over the top. They got bullied and criticized because people in the media were lazy and it was an easy go-to. Easy. But here's the problem. Now it's swung all the way over to the other end to where we're talking Super Bowl uh, about a team that's won 11 games in four years. Like, you can't go so drastic in one direction and then completely a 180 in the Together. There's a I, couple of AFC teams. We, we want, do we even want to name them? I mean, I'm just like, really? They jumped over everybody. I just, I how, don't. They, how? I, I just think they jumped over the Chargers. Look, uh, remember they jumped over the Patriots. They jumped over the Chiefs. You, help, help me out. You remember? I think was it 2011. It might have been before 2011. But there was that lockout. The CBA, the owners and the players, and they were missing time. And then all of a sudden, free agency started. And you remember the Eagles got real aggressive and went out and yep. signed guys like Nam Diaz. I remember all that. These guys. Yep. They were eight and eight that year, man. You you can't just assume because you've built a roster up that all of a sudden that team's going to make the turn and go from a seven eight and one one. One win against a playoff team from a year ago, and all of a sudden they're going to be Super Bowl contenders the next year. I just don't buy it, and I don't know why we can't just take the wait and see approach. It's either a drastic uh, embellishment by the media talking about how bad they were for passing up on Carson Wentz, or it's a drastic embellishment of the media talking about how this team's a legitimate Super Bowl team. I don't understand it. I really don't. I I, I don't either. I, I get it. They got a good roster. Nobody's saying that they don't. They got a lot of potential. There's a chance they can make the playoffs. I got all that. But the Super Bowl talk is way, yes. way oh, overhyped yep. and and borders on ridiculous. And and here's the other part of this as well, too. I have no issue with Baker Mayfield's approach on anything that he's done. Just because it's not normal quarterback behavior doesn't mean it's not going to work. He's a talented guy, a really good quarterback. He gets fired up and he gets his team fired up. So I get all that. And Freddie Kitchens did a great job with him. Freddie Kitchens but, is a first time first yeah, head, uh, head coach. And 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 here's here's a reality. There were candidates who were being considered for the Browns head coaching job that passed up on the job, reportedly Mike McCarthy being one of them, because the Browns were adamant that Freddie Kitchens had to be a part of the staff. And Mike McCarthy and other candidates were like, uh, no, I'm out. Sorry. You're, like, you're can, right. I, can I at least pick my staff? Can I pick my staff so, if I'm going to go go down and write? I want <laughs> guys around me who have my best interest. So if Freddie Kitchens is is simply a plan B at head coach and, and you're you're trusting him to run the organization, I, I don't know why we're talking Super Bowl. He wasn't even the guy you wanted. If he was, why didn't you just give him the job right away? He to was already with? on the staff. Yeah, like that was it was similar to what happened in, with the 49ers uh, a few years back. Adam Gase was ready to be hired as head coach for the San Francisco 49ers after Jim Harbaugh left. Adam Gase turned down the job because the 49ers demanded that he keep Jim Tom Sula as his defensive coordinator. Adam Gase said, no, I want to retain Vic Fangio. I like Fangio a lot. And the 49ers said, nope, sorry, it's either Tom Sula or, or uh, you're, you're, you're out of here. Sorry, you're not going to get the gig. And Adam Gase said, okay, uh, screw you. I'm going to go to Chicago. Coincidentally, Fangio went to Chicago, and both those guys are head coaches now. You can't tell people you've got to keep so-and-so or else you don't get the job and then expect that it's just going to be this smooth transition for whoever did end up getting the job just because somebody else didn't want it. It doesn't make sense. No. And now we're talking Super Bowls. Hold, just slow down, man. They're going to be a fun team to watch. I hope they do well. I love the Browns fan base. I, I have them not making the playoffs. I have. There's enough to me there that it, it won't work because uh, especially with the Odell, if he doesn't have the rapport chemistry right away, right. will he feel good about it? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. He already is talking like he misses New York, like he's a scorn lover. Because he won't stop, and people go, well, they asked him. Uh, he's just answering the questions. You don't have to answer those questions just because somebody asked you. Yeah. You could say, I'm not talking about New I'm in Cleveland. This is where I want to be. I think at first he was excited about moving on, 
And then he realized he woke up one day and was like, I'm in Cleveland. You know what? LeBron was from this area, and he walked out on the city twice. I'm in a place nobody wants to be. It's amazing what you're really into when you're really hungry. All right. Here's, right? here's my example for you. I remember growing up, so we didn't have a lot of money, but we, were, we would grow up, and if, if I was really hungry, but I knew dinner wasn't for a little while, and it just probably wasn't going to be the greatest dinner in the right. world, I'm looking around for anything to eat. And I remember there was something about those little oyster crackers when I you're remember starving. Those, yeah. I could rifle back like 3,000 of those if I wanted to. Joey Chestnut can can go screw himself. I would have dominated that clown if we would have had an oyster cracker eating competition on Coney Island back in the day, if I was eligible age-wise. That being said, it's almost like they've been so starving for a good football team that they saw 7-8-1 and one and said, all right, we're back. We're right. tight. You were a below 500 team, a below 500 team. Just because you were starving didn't mean that the meal was worth or, or exactly what you thought it was in your mind. You were just starving and you were blinded by your starvation. So you thought a 7-8-1 and one team translated to, we're going to make a Super Bowl run. I just, it, it's it's almost bizarre to me how this, how, how this whole thing has taken a turn. It's crazy. Uh, he is Rob Parker. I'm Jonas Knox. In for Chris Broussard here on Fox Sports Radio, 877-99 on Fox is the phone number 877-996-6369 uh, and you can get Rob on Twitter if you have more complaints about uh, some of his uh, bashing of athletes throughout the course of the show at Rob Parker FS1 and correct? check out my picture to see how fat I am and how bad my breath is <laughs> that and is I true. can't get women yeah that is true uh, all right so uh, we've been talking though a lot about the uh, Cleveland Browns in essence, let's just go ahead and slow down on some of the Super Bowl stuff. I know yes. Freddie Kitchens is talking Super Bowl. That's the right mind frame. Every team in the NFL, should their goal should be to win a Super Bowl. But they've just all of a sudden become the media darlings of the NFL after they'd been picked on for a decade. And, and it just it's it's bizarre to me. John is listening in Ohio here on Fox Sports Radio. John, what's going on, man? Hey, man, I love listening to the show every day when I drive home, and I just heard your take, you know, the media's take on Cleveland's expectations. Here in Northeastern Ohio, we're a little more humble than that, a little more educated. I do believe most people that I talk to, 9-7, and 10-6, and 11-5 and five with the best-case scenario, but the Super Bowl talk, that's not coming from... It- the local media. I think that's more of a, a national oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Too. I agree, John, with I you totally about agree. the national because the Browns became suck sexy. It's a, it's a it's another storyline. We, we we weren't watching the Browns. They were out of out of NFL America, and now they've been welcomed back in. Yeah, and, and John, so when you guys hear this stuff and, and the national media all of a sudden swing all the way back uh, the other way after they'd been bullying the Browns for and making a mockery of the Browns and laughing at them, locally, does it irritate you guys? You guys get a little worked up about it, or you just think, all right, those are national guys, don't know what they're talking about? Well, being a Browns fan, I get nervous thinking that if – we're going to get jinxed somehow because it seems like we always are snake bitten some at some point. So whether it's our quarterback getting hurt or something, as a Browns fan, you just never you never count your eggs before they hatch. Hey, hey so John, I don't care if we're up by twenty in the fourth quarter. I, I ain't trusting it. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and this is just me as the reporter who's always rooting for the best story. The best story is for the Browns to go zero and three to start the season, and then see. How everybody oh, reacts. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that would be the story where you go, well, uh, oh, and three, uh oh. And yeah, then, I mean, look, and and because the expectations, we appreciate the call because the expectations are where they are. I don't want to hear, and but here's the problem. You know, this is going to happen. Say the Browns start one and two, or say the Browns start one and three. All of a sudden, people are going to jump on the Browns. So they were frauds. They were this. They were no, no. You. Just blew the pick, all right? You had had a miscalculation. That's your fault. Those were your expectations. My expectations are exactly what Rob just said in Cleveland, which is realistic. Nine and seven, ten and seven. Okay. I'm good with that. Yeah, I, can, I can live with that perfectly and they fine. make the playoffs. But, but, if, but if, if the Browns go, you know, eight and eight or nine and seven, I don't want to hear anything about it being a disappointment. It's a disappointment if you completely botched your analysis of the Browns and had them going to a Super Bowl. Uh, Mike is in New York listening here on Fox Sports Radio. Mike, what's happening? What's up, Jonas? What's up, Rob? What's, what's up? up? I'm great, guys. How are you? Good, man. All right, first, I got to say, Rob, I don't know what has gotten into you, but you have been on point about the NFL. 
I've been covering Man. the league since 1987. No, but hear me out, Rob. Last few years, like Tom Brady has proven you wrong, and everybody. But no, you're spot on. Like all your predictions about how the Browns and the low and Dak is like this year is the year of Rob Parker. I see it all playing and out. There's no way Tom Brady's going to be good at 42. No, and there's no way the Browns are making this. It's like everything he's saying. It's like I can see it happening. Hey, hey, Mike. Mike, I appreciate that, hey, man. The love out there. Hey, Mike, um, you ever seen one of those claw machines? Like you go in there and you drop the claw down and it picks up like a prize out of those claw machines? Yeah. You've seen those before, right? So, like, when you played and you won, did you pull out, like, a Rob Parker oh, stuffed animal? Oh, man, like, was stop it, is it. it. Is it a Rob Parker stuffed animal that you sleep with every Rob night? This, this ball washing has stop got to it. stop. It has got to stop. This ball washing Mike, of appreciate Rob Parker the call, is my nauseating man. here on Fox Sports Thank Radio. Thank you, all. Just disgusting. Disgusting behavior. Oh, uh, Marty is in uh, Kentucky here on Fox Sports Radio. Marty, what's going on, man? What's up, Jonas Knox, the most recognizable voice in sports radio? How's All right. It, how yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, screw yeah, now you, Rob you feel Parker. good. Yeah, now you feel you. good. Screw What's you, Rob like Parker. Inside of that fat guy that can't get no women. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I wait. I do, hey, you know what's so funny is is uh, that he would bring that up on the day that I, I – and I'm going to show Jonas because – I, I had a goal when I started uh, yeah. to eat right and diet and training. Yeah, you've lost a lot of weight. And look at what I weighed yeah. to this, Jonas, today. 167 pounds. Oh, you're 6'5", 165, I'm, I'm, I'm 6'4", 167. That's, That's good. my weight. Honest yeah. to God, like Rob doesn't even knock anymore. He just jumps through the keyhole. That's a, exactly. Right. Yeah, Rob, when you're on that cruise, I want you posting pictures <laughs> with two, two gills on each arm. Every day. You know what? Off them hot grandma. Wait, did Gilf. you just gilfs? Grandma's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you know. What the hell's happening? <laughs> A gilf. Wow. <laughs> what the hell's happening? My ball's going to be swinging. That, that, Unbelievable. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Yeah. Y'all yeah. are going to be surprised when I go on this cruise and I come back and I'm sending pictures and I'm doing jello shots and... You know, I'm getting whipped up with a walker and all that. I mean, like, <laughs> like, like yes, that big is, daddy. I mean, Watch. I just, it's a Golden Girls cruise. We're going to have I mean, What fun. are we talking about here? We're going to be drinking cold medicine and whatever to get a buzz. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to be exchanging each other. I'm oh, going to give man. them my, my uh, stocking cap. They're going to give me their hair net. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to have pictures and everything. A diaper night on the water. Oh, stop. It's going to be fun. Hey, it's the I Couple. I'm Chris. He is Rob. And we want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. You know, you can listen to us on the radio. And now you can watch us as well. And it's fun. No question about it. And remember, oh, yeah.